Cambridgeshire might be one of the flattest counties in the UK, but there must be something in the water. After all, these lands have given birth to some of Britain's greatest minds. Samuel Pepys, Oliver Cromwell, Richard Attenborough and Stephen Hawking all hail from these parts. But eminent thinkers aren't just born here, they're made here. Home to one of the most prestigious universities in the world, Cambridge has been a site of learning since the Middle Ages. As teachers themselves, we thought Jim and Marion would appreciate a quick lesson on their potential new county capital. So, earlier in the week, we sent them to meet up with Richard Butler, a final year student studying architectural history. So the history of Cambridge um, goes back to Roman times and was an important military and trading post. Um, the town first got its um, charter in 1201 AD and a few years later students arrived after a schism at Oxford. And the story goes that some students headed in the direction of Reading and were never heard of again. But those that came here founded uh, the origins of the university and about 80 years later the first college and Peter House just over here was founded. The university was, and still is, made up of many different colleges, each with its own property, income and staff. By the 16th century, there were already 16, founded and funded by the important literati and glitterati of the day. The most wealthy was Trinity College, founded by King Henry VIII himself in 1546. It's now home to 600 undergraduates, 300 graduates and over 160 fellows. That's some seat of learning. So we just come from Trinity College, which is supposedly the wealthiest college in Cambridge, and by legend it's possible to walk the whole way from here to Oxford on land purely owned by Trinity. And in medieval times, another wealthy college was, was King's College, King's College Chapelshire, which was founded by King Henry VI in the 1460s. It wasn't finished until the time of King Henry VIII, but 100 and something years later. As you can see, it's one of the most uh, impressive buildings in Cambridge. Mm, it's really it impressive. Is, yeah, it certainly is. You can totally submerge yourself in history and tradition here, but if you're not careful, one of the traditions forever linked with the university might just have you completely submerged. In terms of actually going anywhere and getting the direction right, the most important thing is to, when you're putting the pole down, to put the pole down right beside the pond the whole way. So it's like touching the pond. Because if it's out any bit, the pond will just start turning around. People always say something that like, it's quite hard to get it, but then once you've got the knack of it, it just like, seems quite natural. Punting has been part of Cambridge's makeup for centuries. These flat bottom vessels were ideal for navigating the shallow waters of the fens and were used by fishermen, hunters, and tradesmen alike. The going was slow, but very economical. A punter could push well over a ton along with no more fuel than a few cheese sandwiches and a pint. Nowadays, it's undergrads and tourists soaking up the scenery. <laughs> 